welcome to Pineapple Dance Studio. Yeah, and set, action, camera's rolling. <laughs> and go. The producers of Pineapple recently discovered some unused footage out back by the bins. And there's great power involved when you become famous, there's great responsibility. So they stuck it all together and made another programme. This is Pineapple Unseen. Look at me! Monday morning at the studios, and jazz teacher Karen Estabrook's class is in full swing. And drop. Karen's a pineapple veteran, having taught here for over 16 years. I just love dancing. And I, I love the, the idea that I can just express myself if I'm feeling sad, happy, whatever I feel, it can come out as an emotional channel in my dancing. And it's great fun. I love it. Laura, love, you're not going to believe this. I'm upstairs. Yeah. Miss Karen Estabrook, babe, I can't begin to tell you what she just told me, <laughs> what she does and what she slipped into no. after her beginner's classes. Thank you very much, Miss Karen Sweet Estabrook. No, what did she do? No, listen, <laughs> all I've got to say, I haven't seen it. Oh, hold on. Six, oh seven, God. eight, back, two, three. Oh. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <gasps> no, you are joking. Oh, my God. You are not for That's real. Awesome. Babe, that one oh looks God, like she works in the tax office normally. I'm sure she wouldn't go and do accounts. No, listen. <laughs> not a lot of people know that I go to fetish clubs because it just hasn't come up in conversation. I love the rubber. I love the idea that it's a second skin. I find it very sensual. <gasps> oh, oh, no, stop it. What does she do? What's this for? Well... I mean, it's not for it's not for the local church on a Sunday, is it, darling? <laughs> so, are you going to take out all my um, all my serious bits and just put the sex in? Yeah, we're going to. Take <laughs> to the, uh, of course we are. <laughs> Meanwhile, internationally renowned cabaret act the Cuban Brothers have arrived at the studios in costume and in character. Hey, it's time for us to get changed. We're going to get in. It's time to go to work. We're going to do some sweating. You're going to smell the realness of Los Hermanos. Let's go. Leader of the group, Miguel, has booked a rehearsal room. It's a nice, nice studio. It's not bad, eh? Yeah. Studio thing. He's choreographed some new moves and is eager to put his comrades Arturio and Kengo through their paces. OK! All the time, they're getting the training times, you know, every day. So we come into Pineapple, this is great. I spoke to Debbie Moore. She's a great girl, very attractive. She's been trying to have a little bit of fun with Miguel and stuff like this for a long time. And, you know, it's hard for me to come into this environment because all the young dancers are there. They're like, oh, yeah, Miguel. Oh, look at this. I'm like, be careful. You know, I'm the married guy. The Cuban brothers perform all over the world. But this week, they've got a gig at a nightclub in London's Camden Town. This show is a big show, Sunday best time. Uh, the Cuban brothers, Los Hermanos Cubanos. Look at this guy. He, all the time, he's trying to show off. You little bastard. Be careful. Don't get the fire. They're doing one interview for me. OK? We want to be... <laughs> you can't believe it. Que pasa? OK. So he's trying to steal the fire, this guy. Be careful. Don't feel him. If he's trying to do it, bang! Go away from him, OK? Uh, for me, we are doing maybe 220, 250 shows a year um, all over the world. Los Hermanos Cubanos have built a big fan, a big fan base. It's great. We get to touch people all over. It's no problem. Excuse me, Prince. Oh, yeah! These guys were not even dancing. It's no problem. Be careful. <laughs> I'm, te I'm telling you, isn't it? So I'm making sure that these guys, every time, it's got to be positions, no problem, OK? It's got to be sharp, everything, bang. You're popping, snap, snap, snap. Floating, floating, floating. Shazam, where am I going? You can't even tell. There I am. Hi there. 
That's where we're coming from. Monday evening, and Louis Spence is expanding on the exact nature of his responsibilities as the studio's artistic director. I mean, listen, every job's mine. You know, I've had to clean up poo from downstairs. Someone missed the toilet twice and done it on the doorstep, and I'm not lying. That is no joke. Apart, and we think we know who it was, and we call her, well, we call her, I won't say exactly, but we call her poo girl, but we don't really call her <laughs> But, and we know it was because, literally, she went to the shop, she took her, she took her pooey trousers off, like this, in the changing room, poo got smeared up the wall, she got a new pair of track pants, said, oh, I'll keep these on. I'll keep these on, she said. Then I go downstairs and there's two poos on the fire escape. Now, I thought she's either got something really against us, and I'm sorry, but it's coincidence that we've got someone smearing poo up the wall in the shop and then we've got poo downstairs on the fire escape. And this happened twice. So that's one of my jobs. Studio regular and YouTube divorcee Trisha Wolf smith has arrived at the studios to meet choreographer Michael Strassen. Today, they're holding open auditions for backing dancers ahead of her big performance at the O2. Uh, this morning, uh, we're looking for um, some fresh new talent who are willing to um, dance with Trisha doing the arm candy song. <laughs> The plan is that I jump out of a wedding cake. And so, so that's, so I need dancers to pull me out of the damn cake. So we might get 500 people turn up or we might get five. 30 minutes later, and Michael's prediction is proving to be overly ambitious. There's an audition in there at 10 o'clock. And it's, it's, a, it's an open. And there's no one here, is there? Yeah. There's no one here for the audition. No one for the. Yeah. So. I'm not surprised. Look, I lost my whole divorce thing this week. Nothing goes right for me. I'm jinx. But that poster didn't work. I wonder why. It's kind of baffling, isn't it? I don't get the youth of today. <laughs> Meanwhile, studio manager Laura Pye and receptionist Annika are looking into London's latest dating craze. Speed dating. Oh, I could do that. They do it in New York, it's all the rage. <laughs> oh, I'll come, I'll come. You can't come. You can't come. You've I gotta, can't you, come. You've gotta be straight. Don't be straight. I could be straight. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> darling. <laughs> no, like, I'm telling you, babe, when my testosterone kicks in, but I am telling you. <laughs> no, you can laugh out. all you want, yeah, darling. No, no, look, right, Wait, babe, chat no. Chat her up, chat her up. So this is speed dating, go. So, um, uh, what <laughs> line of work are you in, babe? <laughs> I work at part of a dance studio. Do you like dancing? Uh, no, I'm, I mean, my sisters used to go to dance when I was younger, but no, I don't really know much about it. I'm more in, like, the tyres and exhausts and, you know, the car garage business. All right, you're a mechanic? No, 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 I own it. What kind of girl do you like? I think you're pretty perfect, <laughs> It's so on. Wait, <laughs> right, you're coming. Right? And I tell you what, if they're all wingers, <laughs> then you could just end up with me. Yeah. yeah. And then you could walk out. With both of you! <laughs> I can do both of you! What, I can do both of you! Imagine all the boys <laughs> then. <laughs> and then all them straight men coming up to me going, here, mate, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, come here, mate. I have to tell you that. Yeah, this is what you have to do. <gasps> could you imagine? <laughs> I can snog you. Can I snog you? <laughs> if I do it at the end, I could do it like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my God, that's good. So funny. <laughs> I don't know if you can. <laughs> no, no, right, no, right. right. no, 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 I don't know, you want to meet up again or whatever? Maybe we can go out, you know, have something to eat or... Oh, really? 100%. Right, okay. That's, you know, it's really nice. So, um, all right, so what, shall I, shall I take your number or...? Yeah. I mean, you should get my number through the thing. Oh, OK. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, all right. Um, <laughs> all right, um, so I will see you... I'll see you... Um, I'll give you a call. Andrew Stone's band Starman remain resolutely unsigned, but that hasn't stopped their manager, Rob Davies, 
from setting up a photo shoot and makeover with a new stylist. Here we are, and uh, we're here to do a photograph session with the band. And uh, we want to make sure we have a really cooler, edgier look, but still not lose our individualism. And make sure we stay true to who we are, but we want to be cutting edge and still very poppy and fun. And um, I'm a little worried, because I don't know what clothes are going to be given to the guys today. It's not long before Andrew's misgivings come to fruition. Not, not feeling it. I'm not feeling it either. It's a bit Jedward. This well, it's look, it's like out of a um, second hand store. I don't want to say too many um, negative things purely because you're wearing this, and if she's got nothing else, I don't want to make you feel crap. At the moment, the looks that they've been portraying before are so zany, they're not even fashion. And that's my job. I'm about fashion. So I'm trying to take them away from looking camp and show the girls, which is the people they're trying to sell records to, that they are hot guys, all of them straight. She's made you, without being rude, look poncy. I think definitely people are thinking that they're gay. Stylist Lisa turns her attention to Andrew next. I'm not feeling the jeans, to be honest. Really? Yeah, I'm not feeling them. Previously, I was worried that you were looking at it a little bit like you'd walked out in fancy dress. Hair and outfit has got to be right. That's the best looking I've seen but, you look. But, I mean, I, it, 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 it wasn't much of a also, muchness. Also, don't forget, you know, I'm what, working, what, 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 one working person, for free Let me say this, what, one person's cheese is another person's chalk. The, the bottom line is, this is an electro-pop rock band, and at the moment, I would go out and I'd feel like I'm singing standout ballet songs. Steve, Steve, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Jackets were made for wearing. Photo shoot complete, and Lisa is ultimately proved correct, as Andrew's grey blazer does indeed capture the attention of some young ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's what I needed. That's turned it around. Can I see the picture? Let's have a little look. Oh, sorry, darling. I want to see what you look like on camera. <laughs> oh. I really like him because. He's quite hot. So. Hey. <laughs> she's got it. Yeah, baby, she's got it. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Your desire. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Your desire. That's a wrap. Meanwhile, artistic director Louis Spence has dropped into the Cuban Brothers' rehearsal to oversee the warm-up. No, you have to bow lower than that. He needs to stretch his hamstrings. Make him bow lower. Come down, please. Lower. No, need lower. Keep, really keep, make Come him down, please. Keep making him go all the way down. Keep, Come way down. down no, further. Get him all the way down. Get his head down. in between his legs. Stretch it. Stretch it, yeah. That's the one. That's it. That's it. Yes, well done. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's nice, isn't it? That, that's better. Listen. I just love I found in you. Miguel writes and performs his own songs, and Louis is more than happy to help him tune his instrument. In central London, the YouTube divorcee Trisha Wall Smith has arrived at a recording studio. Hello, hi Andrew. Hi, Good you go. to see you. Oh. Many men, many men, many men, men, men. Walker's Chris. Walker's Chris. Hello. Cool. Happy? Yeah. Uh, so. Yes, yeah, sounds really good. After her extensive vocal warm up, Trisha gets to work on her new song, Stop which was inspired by a recent romantic encounter. Everybody knows that when I was married, it was, like, kind of sexless. Anyway, this chap came along and, um, and actually um, leaned over and kissed me, and um, I kind of melted. Stop stroking my cheek. My body's melting, growing weak. What happened to me last year is, was pretty awful, and 
it does make you a bit dubious to so go give your heart again. So that's that's where that song came from. I love the song, love it. Stop driving me wild. Don't wanna be bewitched, don't wanna be beguiled. All right, good job, Trish. Thanks a lot. Go, should we go for a curry? Yeah. We fancy a curry. Band manager Rob Davies has called a meeting with Andrew Stone to discuss Starman's progress. The meeting's being held in Rob's office at his mum and dad's house. To tell me, Rob. <laughs> what's going on? Okay. Stop doing dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to tell me, Rob. What's... <laughs> Not muck, muck up my bed. OK, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, the springs have gone a little bit. Yeah, yeah I wonder why. <laughs> Certainly not because they're doing anything. Unless they put weight on. Anyway. I don't know. I, look, if you see this, right, it's like going up my arsehole. It's really, uh... <laughs> we should be used to that. <laughs> yeah, well, you around, definitely. Anyway. <laughs> not I just love bed. it. I don't know why I'm doing this. Can you say you guys have shared this bed? No. <laughs> no. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Me and Rob, have all, we've always been very close friends, but we've um, never cremated it. So it's all good. <laughs> Artistic director Louis Spence will soon be hosting a live show at London's O2. He and studio manager Laura Pye are at a costume hire company looking for suitable outfits. The thing is, we've got to find some costumes. We've got quite a lot to find. Give me a theme. Give me a theme. Make it quick. Starman. <laughs> go, Lou, go! <laughs> this is the present Starman outfit. I don't know. At the, at the back, it's a bit revealing. You're going to have to wear nicer pants. We can't have the white pants on. You got a blonde wig? And welcome to the O2. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. And I have for you now, yes, the one and only. Want some matter new? Want some matter you? I just want your extra time. Your kiss. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Andrew Stern and Starman. Oh. Woo! Right next, right. get off. It's Britney Oops, I. What about, what about a bit of hip-hop? Just get me some hip-hop. Faye! Just get me, like, a puffer. <laughs> get me puffer jacket, Faye. And get me, like, some bling, innit? <gasps> I don't know oh, what my you God. Heard about Instantly. Me. I think I'm done. Well done. We're done. I think I'm done. Faye, we need all that in a bag, please. <laughs> Faye! Unhappy with his stylist's choices, Andrew Stone has gone clothes shopping for himself and has already spotted something he likes the look of. Very nice. I really what like size this. are you? Uh, medium. <laughs> extra large, I'm joking. Extra, extra large? <laughs> really large. <laughs> tell, tell me again where you're from. You're half Italian, half Romanian? Yes. That's a mix. That's a nice mix. Never, I've never known anyone half Romanian, half Italian. So which half of you is Romanian and which half of you is Italian? My mum is Romanian and my dad is Italian. Oh, right. I meant you physically, actually. But that's fine. <laughs> well, <just laughs> this is my Italian, Italian side. This is my Romanian line. side. You know what they say about Italians, you know what I mean? Yeah, your bum's not too big. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Um, See ya. See ya. There you go. <laughs> oh, don't go. I'm going on the plane. Well, it's a little bit baggy at the crotch, isn't it? Good stuff, all right. I'll try on the other ones anyway. I feel like a, I feel like a da in this, and in my shorts I feel like that. So I'm not sure what to do. I can still do that. Splits and that, okay. You know, I've got a good deal because it's fifty percent off. You've got a good deal because I take two things. Three because you're taking the top as well. <laughs> oh, she's clever. I like her. Actually, I'm taking four because I'm taking you out Friday, so I got four things. So there you no, go. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you're coming to the gig Friday. Yeah, we are coming to the gig. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that's great. There you go. Don't worry, I'll be with my bandmates anyway. They're, they're lonely as well, so don't worry. <laughs> Who's your friend? Ah, uh, boy. Okay, cool. She kept that one. She kept that bit of uh, information right till the end, didn't she? That was very clever. Get your rocks up, get your rocks up, honey. Check them down, down, get them up downtown. Get your rocks up, get your rocks up, honey. Check them down, down, get them up downtown.
10 a.m., an artistic director, Louis Spence, has received reports that the documentary Guys, film crew has been getting in the way of studio business. Listen, OK, what you have to understand is that we're running a business, all right? There's other people that have to come in after. You don't have to freak... Get the camera out of my face. I'm not even going to bother speaking to any of you. I'm going to speak to Jonathan. He's the one I'm dealing with. He's the one we said that he's going to make sure that everything runs smoothly. He's the one that needs to keep to his word, all right? So don't even bother speaking to me. Furious, Louis calls the show's producers to make a formal complaint. Turn the music off. Can you turn the music off? Can you turn that off? Hello, Jonathan. Listen, you need to come down here, like you said you were going to come down every day, like you were meant to be, which you haven't done because you didn't yesterday, so you already haven't kept to your word, and you need to keep your crew in check. It's not like that, Jonathan. Yes, when you first come in, you may have been cute in your tight white jeans. You're no longer cute. You're getting on my nerves. Has something gone wrong, Jonathan? When there's a hire in there after, then you have to clear out. If you don't get down here now, within the next five minutes and sort this out, there won't be a documentary, all right? Guys, you better clear out of this studio now. Friday night is Lad's Night Out, and Dynamo dating duo Rob and Andrew are on the prowl. What would your tactic be for chatting up the ladies, mate? Well, the other, the other week, when I chatted up the Spanish girl, she was wearing a really cute hat. So I just, I just said, oh, that's, that's a really cute hat. And then we just got talking. Bandmate Luca turns up, and the lads decide to test out their killer lines on some lucky ladies. Oh, 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 oh wow. there. I don't want to invade someone's space. Oh, no, yeah. Are you sisters? No. no. You do look at you look so it's similar. It's the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not the eyes, it's the teeth. Yeah. Right. It is the teeth. Oh, she's so got me. I love her. I love you. I used to work for Simon Cowell. Did you really? Yeah, yes. No, we're not lying. We're not yeah. lying. <laughs> Why would we? Seriously, you did. And I've I've danced with Britney Spears and Sung with Tina Turner. Well, Having impressed two girls with their CVs, the boys make a full sweep of the bar. You look like Kylie. Oh. And you know that. You must look like Kylie. I, I was drawn to your, 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 your crossed legs. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. Sadly for Andrew, this lady has somewhere else to be. Amazing figure. If only, if only, if only, if only. Oh, my. Eleven PM in North London, and international cabaret act the Cuban Brothers are making last minute preparations ahead of tonight's big gig. Suitably charged up, the Cubans take to the stage. I just love how you're finding me. Finding me. You're finding me this way. Hey. Having showcased their new track, the boys cut loose with their well rehearsed new dance routine. For Miguel, this gig is a chance to get up close and personal with his fans. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, stage diving in a thong rapidly leads to a wardrobe malfunction, reminiscent of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes, friends, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm referring to, friends. You see that? No problem. I even went off the stage and got caught inside my own eye. That's what I'm referring to. What a show. Los Hermanos Cubanos Cuban Brothers signing off. That's how you do it, papi. <laughs> Rock god in waiting, Andrew Stone, has been in his hometown of Norwich promoting the new Starman single. Last stop is the Student Union Bar. To Sarah. The whole... Very famous, though. No, uh, little snails creeping, creeping, little caterpillars. <laughs> We're going in that direction. We're slowly getting there, but I can't do it without you guys. It's not long before Andrew's newfound fans put him on the spot and demand he sing live. To be honest, I thought you were someone out of Hollyoaks. I was to say, he looks a little bit like H from Steps. He looks a bit like Bruno. Oh, I reckon he looks, <laughs> you know, he looks like Derek Acora. Because you know just what to say, and Norwich knows just what to do. They're a tough crowd, and things take a turn for the worse when a fight breaks out in the bar. Slightly shaken, Andrew decides to cut his losses and makes a sharp exit. Um, I was really apprehensive coming here today with the whole Norwich Union thing. I've never done something like this before. I've never been to university, I've never done anything like this before. So I've got a great reaction from people. Um, you have to have big shoulders because uh, there's some, you know, a lot of up people in there and I'm only a small lad, so uh, I felt like a little bit intimidated at times, but it's all good. And everyone's here to have fun and, um, yeah, and, they, and, they, and they really dig down music and really dig, hopefully, me. Anyway, I will see you back in London. After no dancers turned up to her last audition, Trisha Walsh-Smith has asked some pupils from her old stage school to perform with her at the O2. After rehearsals, Trisha reminisces about her days treading the boards at stage school. I used to always fail. Did you fail? Yeah, always, yeah. What did they say? Well, because they wanted me always doing comedy. They said I was funny and I wanted to be like a Shakespeare actress. I used to do um, Juliet. Shall I speak ill of him as my husband? Oh, poor my lord, what tongue shall smooth thy name when I, thy three hours wife, have mangled it? And everyone would laugh. And it really pe And they said, well, you see, you laugh. <laughs> Rose and flows of angel hair and ice cream. Stop laughing. No, did they enjoy it? in the air and feathered canyons everywhere. I've looked to clouds that way. I've looked to clouds from both. Anyway, it's going to be high. And they would say, oh, your comedy. The O2 gig represents the pinnacle of Starman's career so far, and manager Rob Davies is determined to make the most of the opportunity. He's called a meeting with the group to discuss his marketing strategy for the gig. Francis? Oh, yeah, I'm ready for the mouth. Davies, it's really for you. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> oh, okay. How you doing, Rob? Yeah, not too bad. How you doing, man? All good. Nice pop. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a competition whereby you put these posters up and we can give fans the chance to win 10 tickets to the O2. Um, so I need some of you to go out to London, east, north, west, south, etc. Um, Andrew, you're going to be central, you're going to be east, you're going to be west, you're going to be... <laughs> <laughs> I got that wrong. <laughs> Should I do that again or are you going to put that in? Yeah, go for it. So yeah, I'm going to be sending you all over the place, so you're going to go central, you're going to go north, you're going to go west, you're going to go east, and you're going to go... 
<laughs> no, you're meant to go central. Okay. Yeah, but he's south. He's south, yeah, south, south. He goes south quite south. a lot, but that's on a Sunday night. South. Hell, <laughs> man, I can't get it right. OK, right, guys, yeah, I got you here today to put some posters up. You're going to go central, you're going to go... <laughs> <laughs> you can't put the... <laughs> It's a bit like Willy Wonka then, yeah? Yeah, a bit like Yeah, Wonka. yeah, golden ticket and all that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So who's that? I'm central, am I? Yeah. And uh, where's Luca? North. <laughs> West. <laughs> East. South. Oh, man. You did it. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. And, yeah, just one last thing. Um, yeah. You're fired. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so any suggestions, Rob, where we put these? Put them around pineapple. G-O-Y. G-O-Y. Restaurants. Cool. Men's toilets for me then? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> In G-O-Y. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Never been there before? No. Oh, cool. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you there. That's where we met. Mm, yeah, yeah, I thought so. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I can recognise you when you turn around. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just chilling about, just, isn't he? <laughs> what's he doing? He's just, he's just... You know what I mean? On the rare occasion that he gets a day off work, I don't want to take the big one today. Artistic director Louis Spence likes to head back to his hometown of Braintree in Essex to visit his family. I was a really happy child. I had a wonderful childhood. I mean, really, really... I, I tell you, the only thing I hated was school. Actual academic. I mean, geography and history. I mean, there wasn't a five, six, seven, eight in sight. A five, six, seven, a da 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 boof, bang. There was none of that. No. That's why I went to gymnastics and trampolining. I was North West Essex champion. But it, it was really good times, you know. My sisters are still here, the rest of the family's still here. I mean, they never left. And then my nieces and nephews have been born here. And normally they marry someone from about two doors down. It normally happens that way. Quite a lot of interbreeding goes on. Oh, Jill lived here somewhere. Jill is funny, when I look back at it now, she was that, the girl what would always have an argument with someone. Do you know what I mean? She'd always like, be really cocky and upfront, always prepared to tell someone, like, oh, you stink, you know, whatever. My lifestyle now is very, very different. I, I mean, the places I go and the people I, I mix with, and I mean, it's very diverse, the people I mix with. It's not, you know, I'm sure you've heard me say many times through the programme, I know a lot of famous people, although I haven't got time to be a celebrity myself, which I don't. I can't repeat that enough. I can't, you know, get that across enough. But, yeah, I know a lot of celebrities, you know. I tell you when I was in the Bahamas with Whitney. Did I not? Oh, well, I went with Emma. Me and Emma Bunton went on the holiday to Paradise Island. And um, when we were there, Whitney was there. Well, actually, not just Whitney. B.B. Wyman, Gloria Estefan, Stevie Wonder. Who else was there? Bobby Brown, Bobby, well, it's Bobby and Whitney were the main ones, really. It's before Whitney had given up the, you know, before she was back, you know. And um, we were hanging out there. I was with Whitney in the Bahamas, and cut a long story short, she made me get in her limousine, me and Emma, chatting about the kids, and she thought me and Emma were doing it. She said, is it you and Emma? I can hear banging next door. They're in the room next door. I said, no, that's not the only thing I'm banging around is the Dolce Gabbana Hills, but I didn't say that. I just smiled and said yes. But like I say, I can hang with Whitney and Bobby and Gloria, and Stevie, and BB. I can hang with them all, but I'm quite happy to come back to Goldenham Drive. I'm happy with these people. You know, the Joneses live up there. So my life has changed, Jess, in that way, that I'm open to many different avenues, but I'm still the same person on the inside. I may fly first class, I may turn left on a plane, darling, but I'm telling you, I'm still the same on the inside. That's where Annette used to live. The big show at the O2 will be given an international flavour by New York rapper's Wizard Sleeve. Newly appointed stage manager Luke Long is at the studios, checking up on their rehearsals. Um, are you accustomed to hip-hop? Is that your kind of style of music? Uh, I don't mind some of it, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not big on it. I'm not kind of up-to-date with, you know, apart from the obvious ones like Snoop and that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't know the kind of up-and-comers. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I'm Luke. I'm going to be stage managing for the gig uh, at the O2. Luke. 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 Please meet Luke. Luke. Yeah. Luke. Where's, where's, where's Louis? Louis is just having a massage. He's a bit tense today, so he had to he had to I don't de stress. Want to talk to you. I want Louis. No. Can I bring Louis. Where's Louis? Louis. <laughs> um, would you guys? Would you mind 
showing a little bit of what you're going to do? Was, How yeah. about we uh, save that? Yeah? We save that for the show. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, can you, you can you kind of educate me? Because to be honest, I'm not. Are you a hip hop fan, by the way? Like, not massively. No, no, no. So I don't. With a name okay. like Loop that rounds with Snoop. You've Snoop. Yeah, Snoop. I know Snoop. No, Snoop. 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 I know, Snoop. but I, I I haven't branched from Snoop yet. I'm Do still you, stuck on Snoop. I'm you ever heard of Uncle Luke? I haven't. From Miami, no. Two Live Crew. No, no, I don't know Uncle Luke. Booty music. Where all booty music came from. No, okay. No, I don't know Uncle. No, no. The kind of the. Go home. Google it. Check go, it out. Go kind of the old school like Snoop and like um, the. Uh, Ice Cube and those kind of guys, but it's going, going way back now. I'm sure my age, I'm sure my age. And we'll see you soon. All right, it's okay. Oh, you gotta do the handshake. There yeah. All right, look, it's about to snap. See, right? see, see, hold on. You gotta hold on to okay. this till it snaps. Okay. All right, so ready? Okay. We'll see you at the show. See you at the show. See you guys. Right. <laughs> so these guys should know what they're, what they're doing and playing to a, a big crowd, and uh, hopefully they'll uh, make, it, make it pretty good, make it pretty pleasant, make it pretty special. Meanwhile, back in Braintree, Louis Spence has arrived at the family home to visit mum, dad, and their dog, Bacardi. So now we're at Pat and John's. Mum and dad, mum's just gone blonde. She's gone blonde, she's gone strawberry blonde. She felt like a change. I don't know if my dad would be at the betting shop or not. He puts daddy's horses on a Saturday. John does his horses. Hmm. It's nice and close, nice and tight. What about for the parking though, is it? Man step. Oh, I've seen my dad's been doing his bread pudding. Does it on Saturday morning, bread pudding. He does the shopping, then does his bread pudding. Mm. All right. All right. Yeah. All right Hello, Bacardi. Who's that? Hello, Bacardi. It's not got sugar on it yet. Granddad's only just done it. I'm sweet enough. Yeah. It's a bit of a little one today, isn't it, Dad? Oh. What happened there? I do all the cooking now, cleaning. What happened to that? That's a bit of a, no, bit, of a poor, bit of a poor bread pudding. No, but I'm a bit sick of it. Every, he makes a great big one like that every week, and I don't want to eat it no more. And the cooking. I'm fed up with it. I'm folding up now and all. <laughs> <laughs> I've got him a special penny with <laughs> that on. <laughs> oh, look at Nanny's slippers. <gasps> What's going oh, on? Louis. They look a bit odd. No, Lou, do you know what I've done? And I bought them cheap, and when I got home and put them on, I keep turning right. And I thought, that's not right. So Dad had a look at him and he said, do you know what, you stupid cow? <laughs> he said, you've got two <laughs> right feet. <laughs> look. So I've been going over that way so that that one sort of looks like... But the bubbles are in the wrong place, aren't they? Cos that should be that side and that should be that side. They look stupid anyway. Oh, well, anyway. So what, what feet they are? Well, they was cheap. <laughs> Six quid when you used to go to school. You used to go up the road, I used to take you to school, and you were in front always doing cartwheels, walking on your hands, doing backflips, going to... It's driving me mad. And um, in the end, I took you to the doctors. And well, I said, you thought there was something wrong with me? Yeah. Dumping. I'm gay! <laughs> no, I said, I said to the doctors... She doc said, no, I knew that. I said, there's something wrong with my son because he can't keep still. I said, even if he's watching the I'm telly, gay. he watches the telly with his legs over his shoulders, watching the telly like that. I said, he's always doing the splits, jumping up and down. So the doctor suggested that I send you dancing with the girls and that would stop you being so hyperactive and jigging about when you're at home and that. So hence, that's why I went dancing, not because you wanted Saturday morning to go shopping, not, 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 not well, that, that story. No, that as well, <laughs> that as well. <laughs> Have you seen Kelly? She'd poke her head round, that's it. <laughs> and then Tanya was raggedy, my other sister Tanya, the one that wet the bed. Oh, we can't say that. Oh, I can say she went. She don't wet the bed anymore. She only wet her up until she was what? Seventeen. She a fortune in Before starting his working day, artistic director Louis Spence often likes to pump some iron at his local gym. Oh, sorry about that, Nick. Did I hit your top end? <sighs> Can you just put the one effort in, not the first one? I know people say, I look amazing now, I look amazing for 40... I know, I know I do. I know that. But I don't look like I did when I was 28. And I want to look back like that, and there's no reason why I shouldn't. Louis's mood is not improved when he spots one of the cameramen chatting on his mobile. Josh, off the phone. Josh, you're filming me. Off the Thank phone. You, Bye -bye. Off the phone, yeah? You're with me, my time, filming me. I won't let you come to the gym. I won't get you a free pass. You may be cute, but you're not cute enough to take the camera off me. 
like I said, I don't know what you are, a runner, a DP, an AP or whatever, but you're never going to move up the ladders. All right? I know a lot of people in this industry, a lot of people. I may be at the gym, but I know a lot of, you know I know a lot of people. I was with the Sugars yesterday, you filmed it. I know Duncan from Blue. <laughs> Friend with Emma Bunton. Back at the studios, Louis calls upon receptionists Anika and Aidan to teach cameraman Josh a lesson. Josh, I told you to be with me. I've got things to do. Josh, you're meant to be with me now. Josh? Oh, yeah. Just, just... Head it in! Come on, let's go. It's been a long week, and prototype rock god Andrew Stone is waxing lyrical about what it takes to become a superstar. The ready-made pop star is someone who actually understands who they really are. It's someone who doesn't actually think they can sing a bit and wants to try the X Factor or do this or that. It's something they actually know they are. And I mean, when I say know they are, they look in the mirror, they see a commercial look that can be sold, they can see someone who can actually be a sex appeal which sells millions of records. There's someone who's got a voice, it doesn't necessarily have to be the best, because, you know, look at Madonna, Kylie, but at least they've got a commercial sounding voice, it's not like a big vibrato you could drive a bus through and it should be on a West End stage. And also they know how to sell what they've got and put it all together in a package and there's Christmas Day. If you are that person, then sell it, you know, and that's what I feel I am. I know, I know I am. I am the one and only. I'm not fearful of what people think of me. I think no one should. You should be allowed to express yourself the way you want to express yourself and not be categorised or pigeonholed. I paint my nails because I want to. I am the one